Welcome to Sound Sleuth, where we build microphones and then we record really cool sounds with those microphones. Today I want to talk to you about my latest project, Tabitha. She is a self-contained mid-side microphone. That means there's actually two microphones in there, a mid or front-facing cardioid and a figure eight side-facing microphone. So we're going to hear what this sounds like and then we're going to go build it. So I'm narrating into it right now, about a foot and a half from it. I'm over here to the left side of it. And now I'm over here to the right side of it. I'll decode that in stereo so you can hear what it sounds like. And if you're interested in mid-side recording and want to know more, continue watching. This build video is only one part of the information to build this microphone. There's an instructable link in the YouTube More Info section and a link to the kit at JLI Electronics. Mid-side recording was first described by Alan Blumline in the 1930s. He patented multiple stereo recording methodologies long before the equipment to accomplish it came into existence. It is a coincident microphone technique that is quite versatile. I will show you how it works and how to build Tabitha, a self-contained MS microphone with excellent audio qualities. Okay, here's how MS microphones work. First, we need something to record. Here's an orchestra. All right, let's add a conductor and, of course, Tabitha, our MS microphone. It faces the orchestra, mid capsule facing straight ahead and the sides facing left and right. The mid has a cardioid response pattern I'm showing here in blue. Now let's add in the side, which is a figure eight pattern. By default, the side lobe facing left is in phase and I show that in blue. The right lobe is out of phase and I'm showing that in red. Now when we decode this in post to get stereo, we add the mid equally to both left and right. Now we add in the side signal in phase to the left. This results in a combined pattern response that points to the left. Now here's the cool part. If we reverse the phase of the side signal, the right facing lobe is now in phase with the left out of phase. Now when we add it to the right signal, it creates a pattern that points to the right. Boom, stereo. There are two really cool things with this. If you change the amount of side signals added in, you change the stereo width. And because the side signals are identical but out of phase, they cancel perfectly into mono. So Tabitha is a self-contained MS microphone. Just how does this work? The mid part is easy. That is a JLI 2555B capsule facing front. Wired normally, with the center terminal providing our signal out and the capsule body connected to circuit ground. For the figure eight pattern, we're actually using two smaller cardioid capsules, the JLI 165s, wired like this. The one that's going to be designated left on the mic has its center terminal connected to signal out. Here's where things get interesting. We're wiring the two capsules in series, but out of phase. The ground of the left facing capsule connects to the ground of the other capsule. Finally, we take the signal connection of that capsule and connect it to circuit ground. This actually works really well. The purist out there may notice that the capsules are not perfectly aligned or 100% coincident. All I can say is listen to it. Tabitha sounds and works great. Here are the full connections. We connect the mid to signal A of the dual OPA board and its ground to channel A ground. The capsule signal of the left side mic goes to signal B, and then the wire coming from the right facing capsule center terminal goes to channel B ground. These are virtual grounds and are not the exact same voltage, so do not connect them together. Then on the five pin breakout XLR, we have a common ground, channel A plus to pin two, channel A minus to pin three, and channel B plus is pin four, and finally, channel B minus to pin five. You may have noticed that there are four little capacitors, 22 nanofarads to be exact, connecting each audio signal to ground. These are for EMI and RF protection. They make the mic bulletproof. Most microphones do not have this and almost no vintage mics do. Back then, cell phones and Wi-Fi were not prevalent. These need to be really close to the XLR connector. A 5 gigahertz signal has a wavelength of about 6 centimeters. That means a quarter wavelength is 1.5 centimeters. Pretty short, and that is a perfect size antenna to pick up signals and noise. These capacitors eliminate that. 
Our first step is to solder two 3 inch leads to the mid capsule, red to center and green to ground. Now we need to mark one side of the capsule holder or microphone saddle as left. Next, insert the two smaller JLI-165 capsules. Use a small amount of E6000 glue to ensure that they are held in place. Attach the mid capsule, also held in place with a couple drops of E6000. A rubber band will hold it tight until the glue dries. Here's what that looks like when the glue dries. Now we wire the figure eight capsules. Solder a three inch wire to the center terminal of the capsule that faces left, and a green three inch wire to the ground lead. We will feed that through the holes in the saddle and connect the other end to the ground lead of the other capsule. Connect a three inch wire to the center terminal of the second capsule. It can be any color, just ensure you make note of what it is. Here is the wiring completed. Now slide on the four little grommets. These provide a bit of isolation and vibration dampening. Feed the side capsule wiring through the center of the saddle. Mount the saddle to the frame using two M2.5 8mm screws and washers. We will feed the mid capsule wires through the two rubber grommets that do not have screws in them. Note the tab on the frame. The side capsule facing left aligns with that tab. Install the head basket. This has two extended cutouts to let the capsule slide in. The head basket is held in place with two short M2.5 screws. Prep the XLR connector. We're going to solder four 22 nanofarad capacitors between pins 2, 3, 4, and 5 to ground. Ground happens to be pin 1 and also connects the mic body via the XLR screw. Tin each of the pins and prep the first capacitor so it looks like this. The extra lead length will connect pin 1 of the XLR to the XLR ground screw connection. Here's what this looks like with just the capacitors. Now connect 1.5 inch wires to the XLR pins. Green to pin 1, ground, red to pin 2, black to pin 3, blue to pin 4, and white to pin 5. Here's what this looks like. Insert the completed XLR assembly into the mic frame. There is a small M2.5 slightly rounded head screw that we will back out to clamp the XLR connector to the frame. Now solder the five wires from the XLR to the dual OPA circuit board. It is easier to do this before mounting the board. Now mount the board with two short M2.5 screws. Solder the capsule leads to the circuit board. Channel A is the mid capsule and channel B is the side capsule. All that is left is to slide the body cylinder on and screw on the end piece. Congratulations, you just built Tabitha, an outstanding single body MS microphone. Okay, let's start using the microphone. This part is the technical how to use it, the creative how to use it is up to you. When recording, plug the mid mic into channel 1 and the side mic into channel 2 on your recorder. You can record either one stereo file or two mono files. Don't use the MS decoder or the MS setting in your recorder. That's going to force encoding during the recording process, which limits what you can do in post. After recording, bring the files into your DAW. 
Send the mid mic output evenly to left and right. Now duplicate the side track or send it to two separate tracks in your DAW. Pan one of those hard left and the other hard right. Reverse the phase of the one panned hard right. I use Reaper and I link the two side channel faders. That lets me bring them up evenly. Now adjust the level of the side to the mid and you have a fully adjustable stereo image. How cool is that? Now that we've finished Tabitha, let's see how she sounds. Here's a little recording of a Hammond B3 organ. 